Okay. Hey there, Facebook. Live on Periscope. Waiting for my camera to flip so you can see me. Uh, but welcome to all my audiences. All right. Now, there we go. Hello, Periscope. All right. Now, I'm going to give you a lot of information, so you need to watch this video more than once to get it all. Let's start out with my tagline. What's my tagline? Here it is. God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to the prophets. One more time. God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to the prophets. Okay? So welcome again to all my audiences, my Facebook Live audience, my Periscope audience, and my YouTube audience. And that's going to be expanding here soon, but welcome to all the people that are watching me live now. Now, I want you to please like and share this video. Okay, my goal is to get this prophetic word to millions of people. Do you know why? Here's why. Because whenever God releases a prophetic gift, it's designed to change nations. When God wanted to speak to a king, when God wanted to deliver a people, when God wanted to win a battle, what did he do? He always sent a prophetic word. He always sent a prophet. There's nowhere in the Bible where that doesn't happen. Hey, Anna, God bless you. There's nowhere in the Bible where that doesn't happen. So when God releases a prophetic gift, it's designed to change nations. So I need to get this word out to millions of people. So I want you to please like and share uh, this video. Um, now, you need to sow into my ministry if you're receiving anything from it. Where does it say that in the Bible? Matthew 10, 41. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. What does that mean? What's a prophet's reward? Is vision. Wouldn't you like... For God to speak to you about your relationships and who you're supposed to marry and, and how to invest in things that are going to happen in your life. And wouldn't you like to have a greater understanding? See, whatever you sow into is what you reap. So if you're receiving anything from a prophetic ministry, if you sow into it, God increases the water level of your prophetic. Now, how, did I, how do I know that? Because I did it. As I began to sow into my pastor's ministry, as I began to support him, as I began to listen to him, as I began to absorb what Pastor John Eckhart was talking about, uh, everything increased for me. Because once again, I never tell you to do anything that I'm not doing. So if you're blessed by my ministry, please sow into it, and God is going to reward you with a higher water level of the prophetic. Because what's a prophet's reward? Vision. Always vision. Okay? So uh, donations is a PayPal me dot link, PayPal dot me link on my Facebook Live Periscope profile on my Twitter feed, and then you can donate to Prophet David Taylor NFP on Amazon Smile. Okay? So you can those links are all on my stuff. Now the way you find me is I always hashtag everything with PDT, hashtag PDT. I'm on every Sunday this time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, and then you can watch the replay on Facebook, Periscope, and YouTube. Then um, I'm live on second Thursdays at 7 o'clock p.m. with a series that I call No More Genies, where we completely get rid of G the genie concept of God and we move towards true faith. That's at the second Thursday of every month at 7 p.m. Uh, live on Facebook and Periscope. And then you can watch the replay on Facebook, Periscope, and YouTube. Okay? All right, so let's jump into the Word. We'll have a quick word of prayer. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to minister. Thank you for your precious word and your precious Holy Spirit. Please speak through me, breathe through my mouth, because it's about what you have to say. Oh, God, and we want to be sure to give you all the glory and the praise that's due your name. For you truly are a good God and wonderful and gracious and kind, and you deserve the praise. And we want to, we want to give you glory in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. Today's uh, word is precision. Today's prophetic word is precision, okay? Now, I've touched on some of this in my No More Genie series, but I'm going to go over it again here, okay? Our scripture reference is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 and 2, okay? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. That's the fifth book starting at the top of the Bible. It's the fifth book of Moses, fifth book in the Old Testament, fifth book of the entire Bible. Okay, Deuteronomy is kind of hard to spell. It's not really a, a word we use a lot. But Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 and 2, and I'm going to be reading out of the King James Version. Okay? And it shall come to pass, 
if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. Ooh, I'm getting annoyed in reading this. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Whoa, Lord. Okay, now, uh, let me show you something. Uh, when you do something like this, move your arm like that, when you ride a bike, when you swim, those are called global motor skills. So in other words, they're big movements, and that's why once you learn how to ride a bike, you never really forget it. And once you learn how to spin, uh, swim, you never really forget it. Because those are big movements. Those are global motor skills. Okay? When you learn your penmanship, however, when you learn how to write, when you learn how to play an instrument like the piano or the guitar, those are what we call fine motor skills. And those you have to practice every day because those are use it or lose it. So if you don't practice your instrument, you're going to lose some of your prowess on your instrument. And if you don't practice that penmanship, what normally happens to our penmanship as we go through life? It gets kind of sloppy because when we first learn how to write, I don't know if they teach kids that now, but when I learned how to write cursive, we had to trace the cursive letters and we had to practice a lot too because you learn you know, how to write that cursive. But over time, that signature just gets kind of rough because those are fine motor skills. You have to keep them up. Okay, you understand that? So global motor skills, riding a bike, swimming, driving. Fine motor skills, playing piano, playing guitar, penmanship. You with me? Okay, so unfortunately in many of our religious backgrounds, what happens is we learn global obedience to God. In other words, we learn the general stuff that all Christians are supposed to do. Uh, go to church, uh, put some money in the offering, Listen to the sermon, get slain in spirit, speak in tongues, go home, <laughs> whatever your denomination is. But it's like that, that weekly routine, you know, you know, go to church, put something in the offering, do some praise and worship, you know, pray while you're in church. Okay, those are things that, that everybody's supposed to do that's a believer. Okay, going to the house of God, praying to God, paying your tithes and your offerings, worshiping God, those kinds of things. And then also speaking in tongues, and a lot of people don't believe in that, but speaking in tongues... Uh, moving the power of gifts, those kinds of things. Those are things that every Christian is supposed to do. Those, that's what I call global obedience. But today what we're going to talk about is another level called precision obedience. That's different. It's not the same thing. And that's why so many people have... Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with what they call the health and wealth gospel or prosperity gospel or prosperity preachers, let me tell you the truth. There's no such thing as health and wealth gospel. <laughs> There's no such thing as prosperity gospel because prosperity has always been a part of the gospel. There is no one that obeys God that doesn't prosper. Think about it. You find me anywhere in the Bible where somebody obeyed God and didn't increase. So sometimes this idea of health and wealth gospel or prosperity gospel is presented like it's a separate thing. It's always been a part of God. If you obey God, you're going to prosper. If you humble yourself before God, God's going to lift you up. When has it ever been different? Old Testament, New Testament, uh, Book of Revelation, you know, future world, new world, old earth, new earth. Every time you obey God, you prosper. So there's no such thing as a health and wealth or prosperity gospel like it's a separate thing from the regular gospel. Prospering is a part of obeying God, okay? But what has happened is that we have been introduced to something called the false prosperity gospel, which tells people that you can do anything you want to do, and then God's going to bless you anyway. Yeah. Mm -mm. That's the one that's wrong. That's not biblical, okay? Can I prove that by scripture? Yes, I can. <clears throat> when God came down to Adam and Eve and saw that Adam and Eve had sinned and eaten the fruit uh, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the midst of the garden, God asked them questions. God said, Adam, where are you? And Adam said, I was naked and I was afraid, so I hid myself. And God said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten of the fruit of the tree which I commanded you that I should not eat of it? Adam blamed his wife. He said, the woman you gave me, she gave me the fruit. 
Then God turned to Eve, and Eve said, the serpent beguiled me, and I ate. Right after that, you know what God did? He dropped curses. He pronounced judgment. How come God didn't say, oh, y'all ate that fruit? Oh, that's all right. My bad. I was just kidding. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> How come God didn't say that? That ain't what the Lord said. The Lord told them, the day you eat that fruit, um, in English it says, thou shalt surely die. In Hebrew it says something closer to dying thou shalt die. So what God actually said to Adam is that you're going to create a cycle of death. That's why there's a cycle of death on earth. Because Adam ate that fruit. God told him not to eat that fruit, but he, he ate it anyway. So he created a cycle of death. That's why we grow old and die. That's why there's accidents and tragedies. That's why there's sickness. All the things you hate about life on planet Earth on Earth, happened the day that Adam did this. When Adam did that, that's when all that happened. That's what God told him was going to happen. You see that? How come God didn't say, y'all ate that fruit? That's all right. I love you. That ain't what the Lord said. As soon as, as, as the situation had been discovered, God started dropping curses. He dropped judgment. So right at the beginning of the Bible, anybody that's trying to tell you, sell you on the idea that you can just do whatever you want to do and God's going to bless you anyway. How come he didn't do that from the jump? Why did Jesus have to die if we could just do what we wanted to do and God was going to bless us anyway? Now, you just think about that for a minute. Think about it. Why did the Lord have to die if God is saying to us, you can live any kind of way you want to and I'll bless you anyway? Why? That doesn't make any sense because it's not true. And so the false prosperity gospel has been propagated for years now where people have become convinced that you can live any kind of way you want to, and then God's going to bless you anyway. It, it goes like this. When people say things like, God said you're the head and not the tail. That is not what the Bible says. I'm about to read it to you. That's not what the scripture says. God said you're above only, not beneath, and then the whole church goes up. Everybody says, amen, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And they just start, you know, the church just lights on fire. As soon as somebody said, God said you're the head and not the tail. That ain't what the Bible said. I'm about to show you. OK, that's the false prosperity gospel. That's why people love it so much, because people want to believe that you can live any kind of way you want to. And God will bless you anyway. That's the same argument that people use when they're trying to justify relationships that are not right in the eyes of God, because you don't have to justify a relationship that is right in the eyes of God. It's when you're doing something that the Lord is not pleased with. Then people try to come up with this argument where they say, well, God is love and God loves me and he loves me for the way I am. That don't mean it's OK to go with merry people just because the Lord loves you. That don't mean it's OK to cheat on your husband or cheat on your wife. That don't mean it's OK to go get pregnant by some other man, come home pregnant and then try to pass that baby off like it's your husband. That's not OK just because God loves you and God's going to drop judgment. This is what humans do not like. And I'm sad to say that many times in our religious backgrounds, people don't say stuff like this anymore. You can't do that and think God is not going to judge you. He will judge you. Okay? Because he said he would. Okay? So you got to get rid of this idea out your head that you can live any kind of way you want to and reap all these blessings from God. That's incorrect. That's incorrect. That's incorrect. Now, you might ask me, I'm going to get to the scripture. I'm not lost. You might ask me, how did that get in the church? I'll tell you how. It happened in the 90s. In the 90s, what started happening was a lot of secular people and a lot of famous people started using churchy language. They started saying, aren't we blessed? We're so blessed. God has smiled on us. Aren't We're so blessed. That kind of thing. And the saints saw that and the saints said, Hmm, because all up until the 90s, especially in Afri African-American settings, it was always holiness or hell. It was always no cross, no crown. It was always you better live right. And then all of a sudden, secular people started, started talking about their prosperity and we're so blessed and blah, 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 and started conveying the idea that you can live any kind of lifestyle you want and still have all this stuff. And then that got started getting in the idea of some of the states. And they started saying, hmm, 
And that's when the Saints started relaxing their standards about what was and was not acceptable in the house of God. And you see what's happened in the last 20 years, well, 18 years since the century turned. If you wonder, wondered when that happened, it started in the 90s. Uh, another thing that happened in the 90s is when we started believing that we had to, had to start taking some Jesus out of church to make unbelievers more comfortable. That ain't nowhere in the Bible. That ain't nowhere in the Bible. That's not what they did on the day of Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up and preached full of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says the men got cut to their hearts. Peter preached a message and told them, this Jesus that you just crucified, that was Messiah. That was the true son of God. That was the bread of heaven sent from heaven. And you killed him by hanging him on a tree. And the Bible says these men were cut to their hearts. And they said, men and brethren, what should we do? And Peter said, save yourself from this untoward generation. That's what happened. Peter wasn't trying to take the Jesus out of church to make the believers, the unbelievers more comfortable. See what I mean? So all that happened in our religious situations in the 90s. And we took these funny turns, and that's how we started getting into false prosperity gospel, where people started believing and even teaching that you can just do whatever you want, and God just going to bless you. That's not true. Okay? So let's go back to the scripture, Deuteronomy 28. We're going to break it down. It says, and it shall come to pass. Stop. You know what that means? That means there's a time element involved. If the Bible says it shall come to pass, that means it doesn't always happen at once. It doesn't happen like that, okay? It, it, it takes some time. It takes some time for your life to look like this. It shall come to pass if. If means everything that happens after that is conditional. So right off the bat, this promise that Moses reads here is conditional. It's conditional. It shall come to pass, time element, if. That means it could happen or it could not happen. That's another place where people get confused about prophecy. Some prophecy is where God is saying, I'm going to do this. And if God says, I'm going to do it, then it's going to happen regardless of what you do. Some prophecy, the Lord says, if you do this, then I'll do that. That means it's conditioned on what you do. You see what I mean? That's why you have to study the scriptures. So it shall come to pass if, if what? If you. It shall come to pass if you. So right there uh, in the scriptures, it tells you that you got to do something. Okay? It shall come to pass if you shall hearken diligently. Stop. Okay? What does it mean to hearken? Okay? It means to listen on purpose. You know how you're driving and you can hear an ambulance? You can hear an ambulance way far back and then it has a Doppler effect and then it's way loud and then, you know that? You're not really focusing it on it. Those are kind of like background sounds, especially if you have like, you know, your car radio on or you're talking on your phone. You can hear the sounds of the highway around you, but you're not really focusing. But when it says to hearken, I'm, I'm listening on purpose, okay? Then it says hearken diligently. What does it mean to be diligent? It means to listen with an, eye, with an ear towards detail, and it means to do it on a regular basis. As the scripture says, for uh, God is rewarder of them that diligently seek him, okay? This is what shuts down the idea that you can be a CME. <laughs> a CME is Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. There are a lot of people that just come to church one to three times a year, and they want a word from the Lord, and then they think that's good enough, and now God's going to bless the whole rest of my year. You can't just listen to God three days out of 365. That's not what the promise say. The promise say you got to listen on purpose, diligently. You got to do it on a regular basis. And you have to do it with an ear towards detail. How often do you have to do it? You have to do it the way the Lord said, every day. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our what? Our daily bread. You've been saying that prayer, the Lord's Prayer, since you was very little, haven't you? You've been saying that since you was 10 years old if you grew up in church, right? Give us this day, our daily, our daily bread. you got to listen to God every day. A lot of people think that's above and beyond. That's not true. You know why that's not true? Don't you eat every day? Don't you feed your body every day? Whatever it is you like, cold cereal, toast, uh, salads, sandwiches. Some people don't eat meat, uh, corn, potatoes you know, uh, uh, 
filet mignon, <laughs> porterhouse steak, uh, pizza. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is that you put in your body, you tend to eat every day, unless, of course, you're fasting, but you can't fast forever. But it's not a strange thing in your mind to have at least one meal a day. Do you see what I mean by that? What people don't understand is that your spirit works the same way as your body does, which is why you have to eat the word every day, which is why you have to spend time with God every day, which is why you have to listen to the Lord every day. So when you sit down to eat breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or snacks, that feeds your body. When you sit down to study the scriptures, uh, go in prayer, spend time in God's presence, listen to the word like you're listening to me now, that feeds your spirit. See what I mean? So that's why you have to do it every day, because it works the same way. <coughs> Excuse me. So now you see that people that, that come to church three times a year, people that read their Bible once a year, they wonder why they can't get a breakthrough from God, because that is not what God said. God said you've got to hearken diligently. You've got to listen on purpose with a, a ear towards detail on the daily, the same way you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So you are not going but above and beyond to be in your word and be in prayer every day. That's what you're supposed to do. And, and some people, especially if you came out of church, nobody ever said that to you like I just said it. Nobody ever explained that to you. That's why people walk around thinking that a relationship with God is a contest. It's not a contest. It's not a holier than thou kind. I'm more saved than you. That's, uh, that, that's not what this is. This is a relationship. This is a life. This is your life. And we're trying to listen to the creator of life. Please tell me what to do so I know how to live. You see what I mean? It's not hard. But sometimes with our religious backgrounds, it doesn't get explained that way. Okay? And it shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently to what? Until the voice of the Lord thy God stop. Why is that so important? I like the way Dr. I.V. Hilliard says it. Dr. I.V. Hilliard, a very, very famous preacher, says, Whenever you come to the decision table, there are four voices there. There's a voice of God. There's a voice of the devil. There's your mind. And there's your flesh. I would like to add one more to that, and that's the voice of society, other people. Okay? So whenever you get ready to make a decision, whenever you're starting your day, the voice of the Lord is there, Satan is there, or some demon, your own mind is there, your flesh is there, and then the influence from other people, that can be parents, that can be a spouse, that can be the TV, that can be societal expectations, that can be family traditions, that can be ethnic traditions, but it's some other humans in your ear, okay? That's five, five, at least five choices you got every time you make a decision. Think about it. Think about it if you like some food, don't nobody else in your family like every time you eat that, they're like, what you eating that for? <laughs> like that. Think about it if there's some holidays you don't like to celebrate and everybody likes them and you're just like, mm. they're like, well, how come you, you see what I mean? There's always a voice in your ear every time you make a choice. There's the voice of God, the voice of Satan, or some demon he's assigned to you, your own mind, your flesh, and other people. The Bible says you've got to learn how to tune out the mother four. <laughs> so what you do is you've got to listen to God. What do you do with the voice of the devil? You rebuke it in Jesus' name and, and release a scripture, because that's what the Lord did. You can't fight the devil better than the Lord. When the devil confronted the Lord directly, the Lord said, it is written. That's why you have to know your Bible. So whenever Satan is saying to you, you say, get behind me, Satan, because it is written. So you listen to the Lord, you rebuke the devil with Scripture. The voice of your own mind must, learn, must be subjected to the voice of God. That's why you have to make your mind new. You have to learn how to think the way God thinks. The voice of your flesh must be crucified. You have to kill it. Because there's nothing good in your flesh. And if you listen to your flesh, it's going to produce death in your life. And the voice of other people, you must be delivered from the fear of man. So one more time. You listen to the voice of God. You rebuke the voice of the devil with scripture. You retrain your mind to think like God thinks. You crucify your flesh. And you get delivered from the fear of man. So you're not living your life based on what people say. Because the Bible says you got to listen to God for all these blessings to come. But I just showed you, you got all these other choices. You see what I mean? Maybe somebody, your parents want you to marry and you know you don't love them. 
If you know in here you don't love them, don't love them just because mom and daddy do. Maybe at college your parents want you to go to, but you know in here, or you can hear the Lord telling you, this ain't the school for me. Don't go to that school just because mama went to that school or your father went to that school. If that ain't where God is telling you you're supposed to go, you ain't supposed to go. You might come from a family of football players, but God is telling you that you're an architect. And you got to have that conversation with your father where your father says, everybody in this family play football. And you say, Dad, I understand that, but I feel like God is calling me to design buildings. You see what I mean? That's how you get blessed. You got to tune into the voice of the Lord, but you got to do what I told you with the mother folk. That's the hard part. <laughs> okay? It's not impossible, but it's definitely challenging. Okay. Hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God to observe and to do. Mm. What does it mean to observe and to do? Have you ever been on your way somewhere to do something that you knew was wrong? And on the way there, it's like you looked at yourself like you had an out-of-body experience. And then when you got there, like you got to the party, you got to the house, or you got to the scene, and you knew what was happening was wrong and you shouldn't have been a part of it, but you participated anyway. It's like you're talking to yourself. It's like, David, what are you doing? <laughs> it's like you're watching yourself. You're observing yourself do something. You're watching yourself do it. So God says you must observe and to do, to observe and to do. So what does that mean? That means I got to write it down on the calendar and I got to watch myself do it. So I put down on my calendar Sunday, pay tithes in church. And I, when they pass the offering or whatever they do it, then you watch yourself put that money down. Uh, when it says I'm going to save money, I'm going to the bank or I'm, I'm going to transfer some money online Monday. Write it down on the calendar, get on the bank, transfer, watch yourself do it. Okay, observe and to do. You're listening to God so you can write it down and then do it. This is another place where people start to break down because they think just because you heard the word of the Lord that that's all it takes. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says you've got to observe and to do. you got to do it. Do you know how many people are going to end up going to hell because they came to church for 30 years but they never actually got saved? They heard the word of the Lord over and over and over and over and over again, but they never actually personally invited Jesus in their heart. And it doesn't matter how often you come to the house of God. It doesn't matter how much you are around God if Christ don't get in you. And that only comes by personal invitation. You see that? You've got to do what the Lord says do. You can't just hear it. You've got to do it. Then it says to observe and to do all his commandments. Stop. Moses said you got to do everything the Lord is telling you to do. And that's where the precision part comes in. That's a higher level than global obedience. Okay? A lot of Christians are happy to stay with global obedience. The general stuff. Go to church, pay tithes, sing on the worship team, speak in tongues, get slain in the spirit, listen to the sermon, go home. And they don't think about God for six more days. The Bible says you've got to do everything the Lord is telling you to do. And something now, what I'm about to say may be new to some of you. God has something to say about your diet. God has something to say about your relationships. God has something to say about your exercise schedule. God has something to say about your sleeping schedule. God has something to say about your career. God has something to say about your relationship with your past. God has something to say about your self-talk, the way that you talk to yourself. God has something to say about your self-image. When, when I imagine me, what do I see when I imagine me? God has something to say about that. That's what Moses is talking about. You got to do everything the Lord said if you want this level of blessing. And a lot of people I've discovered don't know that God loves you and cares about every single layer of your life, your diet, your kids, your marriage, your job, all the people in your life, your exercise, your thoughts, your self-talk, your, your level of education, where you live. I mean, literally, the physical space you live in. Did you know that some ground is cursed ground and there's some places you shouldn't live? They shouldn't build houses on it because the ground is cursed. Did you know that whenever you move into a new space, you've got to walk through that space and bless that space in the name of Jesus and drive out anything that might have happened in there that wasn't of God? Did you know that? Did you know that you need to anoint the space with holy oil and speak the word of God and put on some worship music and create an atmosphere in there that the angels are welcome in and cast out anything that's not of God. Did you know that? A lot of people don't know that. 
That's why a lot of people are either living in the wrong house or they always got these funny things happening with their house they can't explain. That's the devil. You got to cast that out because sometimes when people have physically done things on physical ground, the spirit of what happened, especially if blood was shed, gets in the physical earth. It gets in the dirt and it creates a spiritual atmosphere if you didn't know that. That's what I'm saying. How do I know that? Because it's in the scripture and because the Holy Ghost showed me. That's how I know. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Every little detail of your life, every little detail of your life, every little detail of your life, God has something to say about. So that's why you have to listen to everything that the Lord is saying. Observing to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. Remember I told you our daily bread. Moses said, which I command thee this day. That's the Lord speaking through Moses. So when God speaks to the prophets, when God speaks to the apostle, like when Peter preached full of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost speaking through Peter. When God speaks to the evangelist, speaks through the teacher, speaks through uh, whatever mouthpiece the Lord is using, you got to listen, okay, that I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So right there, after you do all what that says, then you start to get lifted up. Verse 2, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. So in other words, your life is going to be full of blessings and the blessings will run you down. Then it says, if, <laughs> if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So if you look at those two verses, they are bookended. And it shall come to pass, if thou, if thou shalt hearken. And then it says at the end, if thou shalt hearken. Now, you don't ever need to be deceived by anybody ever again because I just showed you in the scripture that the Bible says it bookends the promise with if you listen. Why do you think so many Christians are married to the wrong person? Because the Holy Ghost told you before you got married that I wasn't the one and you married him anyway. <clears throat> Why do you think so many people think that they waiting on God? You are not waiting on God. You are not obedient to what God has already told you. Some people looking at me right now, God told you to move out of where you're living right now, and you still haven't done it. You are never going to get into the next level of blessing until you obey God. Okay? Because the Bible says, I just showed you where the, the Bible says, if you listen, if you listen. <clears throat> so when you hear people say things like, well, whatever God wants, that's not the truth. God has a will. God has his word. God wants things for you. But you must listen to him, and then you got to do what he says do down to small details, and you got to do that every day. Then, that's actually what the scripture says. I just showed it to you, okay? So you don't have to listen to the false prosperity gospel anymore. Now, you're familiar with all the verses after that, bless shall thou be in the city, bless shall thou be in the field. You know, that's the one that people always quote. They always quote the blessings, but they skip them first two I just read, which shows what you got to do. Okay, so today's prophetic word is precision. So today I want you to make a commitment. I want you to, to make a change. And I want you to, uh, when you go before the Lord from now on, especially if it's your first time doing it, take a notepad. Because I, I have mine. When I'm before the Lord, when the Lord is telling me stuff, I'm steady, writing it down. Take a notepad. Like, I'll give you an example from my own life. Uh, was it uh, three years ago? There was a book that I had written that I wanted to release. And I was about to release it. And the Lord said, no, don't release that one. Release this one. And I was like, are you sure? He said, yeah. I released that book three years ago, and it completely changed my life. And every day I keep thinking to myself, what if I had done what I wanted to do? What if I released my books out of order? What if I had released a book that, that the Lord said, it ain't time for that yet? See, if I had if I had listened, because remember I told you all them things that when you make a decision, if I had listened to my own mind, I would have missed a blessing that completely changed my life. But I listened to the Lord. I did what the Lord said, and it completely, the whole last three years of my life changed because God said, don't release that book, release this book. I listened to that voice and I don't even have time to tell you what opened up for me because I did what the Lord said do. Remember, anything I'm teaching you, I'm doing it, <laughs> okay? Because I remember when I was young, I didn't understand the people who would like be saying stuff, but then like they didn't do it. That confused my kid mind. 
So I made myself a promise that if I ever got grown and if I ever went into ministry, that, you know, I'm going to be preaching and teaching stuff that I'm doing. Okay? So that's what I mean, even something like that in your career. The Lord said, don't do what you're thinking, do what I'm telling you. And I obeyed, and my whole life changed. And sometimes I just, I just think about what would have happened if I had done what I thought. The whole last three years of my life would have been different. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So I want you to make a commitment today to move out of global obedience and begin to move into precision obedience so when you go before the Lord, you go before the Lord with a mindset of listening. Let me read the scripture. Let me listen to the prophetic word or the preached word. Let me go before God in prayer with a mind to write down what I'm hearing so I can begin to observe and to do everything that the Lord is telling me. That also means you have to take your prayer life to a new level and you have to start talking to God about everything. Talk to God about everything. And I mean literally everything. Talk to him about everything. Talk to him about your diet. Talk to him about going to the gym. Talk to him about the way you go to work. Talk to him about your, uh, your, your kitchen practices. Talk to him about how you spend your time, what your time management looks like. Talk to him about your relationship. If you're married, if you're not married, if you want to be married. Talk to him about your kids. Talk to him about your best friend. Talk to him about every detail of your life. And, and for some people, that's a new level of intimacy with God. But he will begin to speak to you. And the Bible says, if I listen on the daily to what he's telling me, that all of a sudden, all these blessings start showing up in my life. Uh, I'll give you another quick example, and then we'll close out. Uh, uh, my friends, I got friends that, are, that just are some of the best people. Just some, I'm just so proud of my friends. I'm so happy to have, I feel so blessed to have my friends in my life. Do you know why they're in my life? Because God brought them in my life. And, and when God brings people in your life, you say, thank you, Jesus. Because there, there's a lifetime of blessings inside of a friend, if you didn't know that. A real friend? A real friend, will, a real friend can get in your ear and give you some wisdom about stuff that you can't even see about yourself. You just la, 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 living your life. And one of your friends say, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then you say, you know, I never thought about that. See, they just gave you a word of wisdom that completely changes the whole game. I know I'm blessed because when I look at my friends and I look at the way they treat me and I look at the way they love me, that's the hand of God. You see what I mean? And God will drop wisdom in the mouths of other people close to you so that you can see things that you wouldn't see on your own. You see what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Now, why did I bring that up? Because there's some people listening to me now, there's some people you need to cut out of your life. You don't want to let them go. Okay? They're not bringing the blessing of God with them when they come. And you need to let them go. You need to let them go. Okay? Because what they're putting in your ear is not helping you in your walk with God. Think about it. See what I mean? Anybody in your life that's not helping you listen to and obey God don't need to be close to you. It doesn't mean you have to completely see the relationship, although sometimes we do, but it does mean they need to be a little bit further back. They don't need to be right up here in your ear. Okay? And then that goes triple for whoever you marry because whoever you marry is in your ear every day. Did you ever think about that? The different thing about when you get married, whoever you marry is in your ear every day. They're affecting your thoughts. They're affecting your self-image. They're affecting your decisions. That's why you want to marry somebody godly. You understand? We say, no, I just want to marry somebody hot. <laughs> I know you just want to marry somebody hot, but we need to marry somebody godly. Because somebody godly will be in step with the Holy Ghost. And they'll be saying what the Holy Ghost says. And that's what you want in your ear. So when decision time comes, you got a witness that's witnessing what the Lord is saying so you can make the right decision. Do you see how important that is? Do you see how important that is? How many people have taken wrong turns in life because they was with the wrong person? Samson and Delilah, Solomon and all them women that, that didn't walk with God. What happened to them? Well, Samson ended up dying early. 
it cost him his life. Solomon waited till he got old and then started worshiping other gods. And then God split the nation of Israel in half because of that idolatry. Because Solomon was listening to the wrong people. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So that, this teaching you've heard today, you need to take it seriously. You need to make a commitment to when you go before the Lord from now on, when you're in the Word, when you're listening to sermons, when you're listening to sermons live, when you're in the house of God, when you're listening to prophetic words, listen diligently, write it down, and go before God and say, God, give me the details. Show me exactly what you want me to do. And you'll see, I'm telling, uh, as a matter of fact, I can tell you this, by this time tomorrow, your whole life will be different. What, what time is it now? Okay, it's about 3.15. By 3.15 on Monday, November 19th, your life will be different if you do what I'm telling you right now. You'll see. It will take less than 24 hours, and your whole life will be different to the point where you'll be astounded when you go before God with an ear towards detail and with a mind already made up, I'm going to obey God, whatever he's telling me to do. Can you see it? All right. Now, uh, so if, there, if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen now so I can pray. Uh, and then we're, we're going to do a few more things. So if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen now. Okay, the Holy Ghost is telling me somebody's having stomach problems. Somebody's having stomach problems. Okay, if you're watching me live, put your hand on the screen. Okay? In the name of Jesus, I speak the healing power of God into your stomach. Because Jesus said, by his stripes, we are healed. Okay? And I command those stomach problems, stomach problems to disappear, dry up, and be 100% whole right now in Jesus' name. Now, why do I do that? Because you can give an impartation. Okay? You can give an impartation of health when you're standing on the word in the power of the Holy Ghost. And even though you're not touching me physically, if you touch the screen, there's no di uh, distance in the spirit. It's the most amazing thing. That's why the Holy Ghost in you, wherever you are now, can give a witness. You see what I mean? Okay. Okay, okay, the Lord is telling me that in the next year, in the, in the next year, somebody's struggling with, with weight. In the next year, God is showing you, in 2019, God is going to show you a new exercise regimen. Because you've been rising and falling and struggling in and out, up and down. God is saying he's going to show you something easy in 2019, a schedule that you can keep. You're struggling because you've been trying to do it yourself. And the Holy Ghost has shown me that the Lord is going to show you in 2019 when and how to exercise so you can keep it up. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I can use my own life as an example. Uh, a trainer told me one time that the best exercise is one that you will do. So I found out, well, not found out, but I love to ride my bike. And I can ride my bike every day. Greetings, Victoria. How you doing? I can ride my bike every day. Okay? So I just started increasing my riding time. Okay? When you ride your bike, man, it works on your cardio. It helps you lose weight. helps get the blood flowing. And I love the feeling of the wind whipping through my ears. helps alert you for the day. Stuff like that. So I found exercise that I can really stick with. You see what I mean? The Lord's going to speak to whoever that applies to, and give you a more precision way to do your exercise so you'll enjoy it and you'll stay with it. Because you're not going to stay with exercise you don't enjoy if you didn't know that. The reason it's, it's such a struggle is because you're, you're not enjoying it. You've got to find something you love to do and God's going to speak to you to help you get that weight off in 2019. Okay? Okay. Okay, the Holy Ghost is telling me um, this seems to be a common one. Because I'm getting this a lot now every week. That somebody's dealing with low self-esteem. Do what I'm telling you to do. Put your, head, put your hand on your head like this and say, In the name of Jesus, I cast out any spirit of low self-esteem. For it is written, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Do it just like that. Let's practice that again. In the name of Jesus, I cast out any spirit of low self-esteem. For it is written. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah, yeah, see, I feel that. Yeah, see, that's going to break something off of you. Some of you have been wondering why you can't get your self-esteem up because it's a demon. You got to cast an unclean spirit out. You got to break that off of you. So do it just like I showed you how to do it. And you see the difference instantly. And anytime that unclean spirit tries to come back, you say that word. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. It is written. Okay? That's how you deal with the devil. 
You don't negotiate with the devil. You don't have a conversation with the devil. You don't bargain with the devil. You say what you do what Jesus did. You say, get behind me, Satan, for it is written. That's how you deal with the devil and demons, like the Lord did. Okay? All right. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, here's a prophetic word. For behold, my people, you are on the cusp of a new year. Listen to the words I've spoken to you, to you this day and begin to seek me on a new level. Begin to surrender every area of your life to me. Listen to my words. Listen to my spirit. Listen to my plans because my plan is better than yours. And I will elevate you to a new place, to new realms, to new places you've never been before when you learn how to hearken diligently unto me and obey my voice, says the good shepherd, says the savior, says the lover of your soul, says the spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. That blessed my heart. All right. All right. Okay. Now, I'm going to say the same thing I said at the beginning of the program. I gave you a lot of information, so more than you realize. So you're going to need to watch this a couple times. So uh, thank you, those of you that watched me live, but you can watch the replay on Facebook Live, uh, Periscope, my Twitter, and YouTube. Okay. Uh, and a uh, new thing I want you to do is I want you to get on my email list. I'm going to have a lot of things coming out in the next year. And some of that stuff is actually going to start before 2018 is up. But in the next year, I'm going to have a lot of stuff I'm rolling out. So I want you to get on my email list so you don't miss uh, any of the new stuff. So the way to get on my email list is there's a button on my Facebook page. That page is dt 2 prophet David Taylor. dt 2 prophet David Taylor. There's a button on there that says sign up. That's my uh, email alert list. There's no spam on it. We don't spam people because I hate spam. Okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. I hate spam. So why would I give you any? Uh, we send out stuff to let people know when new things are happening, when something new drops or there's a new, uh, new kind of event or something. So go to my Facebook Live page, uh, click on the sign up now button, and get on my email list so you can be alerted to all the new things. Okay? All right. God bless you. I'm going to pray a closing prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your mighty word. Thank you for your mighty spirit. Oh, God, we are challenged. We are encouraged. Oh, God, we are, we are expecting to do new things, Lord, before this year ends and before 2019 hits. Because now, oh, God, we want to listen to you diligently. We want to listen to you, oh, God, in a way we never have before. We want to listen to you, oh, God, with precision. We want to surrender every single area in our lives to you, oh, God. So we don't have to stumble through life and wonder what to do, but we can know according to our, our precious Heavenly Father and our loving Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, and according to the empowering, sweet Holy Spirit. So we can know when we're in your will. So we can know what you want us to do. So we can plan out these things so we can have victory in all that we do. We thank you for this word. We thank you for this challenge. We thank you for Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Amen and amen. God bless you. Again, that, that, that message blessed my heart. Thank you so much for those of you that are tuning in live. And um, so tomorrow's my birthday, so wish me a happy birthday. And um, so I'll be here a regular time. No, 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 no. I won't be here next Sunday because I'm going to be at a convention. So I'll probably come on at 2.30 to remind you that I'm actually going to be at Chicago Pop Culture Con. Thank you. Chicago Pop Culture Con next Sunday. So I'm going to be there pretty much all day Saturday and Sunday. Thank you, uh, Anna and Victoria, uh, so for the birthday wishes. And so, um, so I'll probably come on live at 2.30 just to remind you that I'm there. But if the Spirit of God gives me a prophetic word, I'll post it uh, on all the channels. So if I, I'm not on live 2.30, I'll post it so you can still receive if the Holy Ghost gives me something to say. Okay? All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Remember to like and share because our goal is millions. When God gives a prophetic word, it's designed to change nations. So be sure you like and share. All right? Thanks so much. God bless you. Enjoy your Sunday. And remember, it's time for some precision obedience.